formula so we'll create a function which ideally would do some computation and would be a ready to use formula for us so uh, no amazing rocket science but just a way of seeing at it so let's say that we want to create a formula which does a square of a number and then just adds one to it right so we'll create a function for that so that would be something like this so let's name it as w and the function command right in which i'm saying this is the number which is supposed to be collected and i'm just saying return so you can do something like this also so the operation can be done at real time within the return right and just say plus one so this could be one thing which you can do just go back right so okay just left a dash over here okay so the w is created as a function and now you can pass some value over here so i can do something like a w of 10 so it will do a 10 square plus one i can do a w of one so square of one is one plus one so that remains as it is incidentally i can even pass a w wherein i can say a c where i'm saying 10 comma 20 comma 30 right so it will do it for a vector also and if i want this c to be first stored in something say a and then i want to pass this a i can pass that a in w that will also be doing the same thing right uh, you can create a function with two variables also so let's do that also so let's create a function called as z when i'm saying function the call to function i'm collecting two attributes over here x and m and then i'm doing some functionality in this i'm saying return return and in bracket i'm saying x so i'm going to add those two numbers x plus m right and i'm going to do a cap over here so i'm going to just add it up and square it up right okay just let me bring it on the same line control enter so you have created a function z now you can use this z and inside that you can pass two numbers right so you can pass two comma four so it would do two plus four that is six and square of that it's 36 right so let me just wipe out the whole object so there's no, no confusion okay so now let's consider a continuous function f of x so here we're getting a little bit into mathematics when you're saying we want a continuous function wherein x uh, square of x plus 3 times x plus 3 if x is a value less than 0 if x is a value less than 2 then it should be x plus 4 and so on right so if you want to do something like this you can just convert that into mathematical form like x uh, cube right if, 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 if x is something which is greater than or equal to 2 then i want to do something like an x cube plus 5 times x minus 7 so basically you would have done this with an if else statement but if i continuously want to use this obviously what i'll do is i'll create a function for this and i see that as conti x say just a reference and x is capital just to give me a reference that this is a continuous x function and i say function call and inside that i just pass the value of x and then i write an if else inside this so i say if else now this if else is not a uh, looping statement this is the internal r function so i'm saying if x is less than point say say less than zero then i'm saying which of these things is applicable so i'm saying then i'll do an x square right plus three times x plus three right else so again it will be an if else over here that's a nested if else i'm saying if else x is less than two then i'm saying do an x plus four right or else it would be an x cube so raised to three comma oh sorry x cube plus remember x cube plus five times x plus no not plus minus seven that's what is the functionality expected and that's how you close it so you can just close this whole thing run it so that's my function which is created 
and now when I call this function quantity x I just need to pass the value 10 so since 10 is uh, obviously not less than 0 right it's uh, it's it's uh, it's not less than 2 also so it should be squared and then added with a 3 times of x plus 3 right so that's how it will work right okay so now we'll go ahead and see as to how uh, you can use and write a function where input is a matrix so till now what we are doing is we are just passing values if you expect that the input should be a matrix such that, such that in an output the matrix is returned but with every even number n the matrix is twice its original size so you basically want to do a square of the matrix which you're passing right so first of all you'll have to create a function for that so say mat function so f u n c t i o n bracket and obviously there has to be mat something has to be there so you're saying that just as mat data and inside that you are doing the functionality where you're saying mat data box bracket mat data percent sign taking the modulo equal to equal to zero right so just taking that condition then you're saying two times of mat data box packet mat data modulo two equal to equal to zero right and then you're saying mat data just to print it right mm, yeah and then if you want to call this right, that's where the matrix would be so first you will let's try mat functionality and you're saying mat data do you think there would be something because mat data doesn't exist right so you'll have to write this so you can say say mat data is matrix and say the data is c 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 and I'm saying end row is equal to 2 and com is equal to 2 and you're saying by row is equal to true and then if you call this so math data is this one two three four and you've done a square of that using mat function right so now we'll do some complex functions in r so let's just clean up the whole thing which we have over here so let's count the number of even numbers in vector x so this doesn't seem to be that complex but yes from a computation perspective and from the perspective of coding it's a bit so let's have a look at that so let's say even count so i'm creating a function which is just going to count even integers in a vector so if you're going to pass a vector it should count only the even numbers so you're saying function x so this is the vector you're going to pass over here and here you're going to first do something like an allocation of k is equal to zero first so that no garbage data is kept in k and then you're going to run for n in x right so over here it's going to say that okay for n in x if to give the condition statement over here if n modulo modulo 2 is equal to equal to 0 which means it's an even number and not an odd then you're saying let me try this with a loop then k is equal to k plus 1 right that's what you're doing else you are saying and over here you're saying return the value of k right, let's try this object x not found okay 
okay it's f u n and we have written function okay okay so let's try to use this function so we are saying even count and let's say three so it's not giving you so when okay now when you're debugging a function you need to be very sure because the function when you're running it if the syntax is correct it will run through but if the functionality is wrong it won't give you that right so you'll have to check that so here see k is a capital k so i'm going to make it a small k and rerun this and now if i run this it's giving me that the count of even numbers is this let's try this one comma two comma three comma four obviously you have to collect this as a vector so i'm just putting it as a concat right so it's not helping us over here okay because we have not used it okay it's equal to n is in okay 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 so we have basically used it for a single number so to work on the single numbers okay so it's what is happening is that the functionality which we have written is for counting only one element over here now you could replace it over here by removing this part right and I'm just saying this return should be not over here but maybe if you can put it over here and rerun this whole thing now it will be able to count the two because the loop is running so based on where you're keeping all these things it changes everything right so now if i'm going to say a one comma two comma three comma four comma five comma six comma seven comma eight comma nine the same that there are five even numbers right okay uh yeah uh, just move ahead and do the next now you can you know, do practice like this and if you want to do computation like uh, calculate the arithmetic mean of a positive number and modify the input values and also provide a warning message if required right so you're just going to do this functionality right so all you have to do is with metric underscore mean your let's check the spelling let me the mean allocation sign in the function call <coughs> with error handling so over here I'm looking at an arithmetic mean functionality in which I'm calling the function yeah so I'm going to pass the value x over here and I'm saying na dot remove is equal to true is equal to false and then I'm saying as a looping statement within these two if right in the if statement I'm saying check not is dot numeric right so I'm first checking whether it's numeric and then I'm giving the opposite of that over here and if it is so then I want a warning and the warning is that converting x to b numeric this is the statement which i want and at the end of this i can possibly add something like x allocation sign as dot numeric of x I'm just moving this over here uh, this one is removed so i will give the warning first and then i'll do the conversion i'll also do an if wherein i'm saying if any is this dot 
any so if there is an any out of the values in x and if x is less than or equal to 0 that's a condition then I'm saying stop that's a command stop I'm saying x dash so I'm just going to give an x double so that it can pick up the data contains non positive values just close it and then just come out of here and then say mean of x comma na dot remove is equal to true which I'm actually going to give the output after removing this so let's run this and then you can just pass some values over here right, so you can just pass something like c10 comma 20 comma 10 so it's saying that uh, you had to convert because I had passed something as string right? so it's handling the error okay so now I'm going to create something which is a factorial function right so you must have done this somewhere in some other coding language so how to do that in R by encapsulating that in a function call so factorial there's already a function for factorial but we're defining a user defined function and in that function I'm saying function x so I'm going to compute the factorial for x and if the logic is if x is equal to equal to 0 then you're going to say return 1 why because the factorial of 0 is 1 right and you're saying else if that's not the case then return x multiplied by factorial of you see what we're doing over here is we're calling the factorial function which you are defining again within the call it's reusable again giving a call over here close it and just try to run it and let's test this now factorial function let's say 2 what's the factorial for 3 it should be 6 for 10 it would be 10 into 9 into 8 into all those things right and for 0 it should be 1 so it's 